Way, way back when I was still a freshman in high school, my friend Tommy invited me and a mutual friend over for a weekend-long sleepover. His parents were divorced, but this was the mid-90s, so almost everybody's parents were divorced or probably seriously considering it. We were sad for him, sure, but then we learned about the other less detrimental stuff and we stopped feeling so sorry for him. I'm talking the whole two Christmases, two birthdays thing, on top of having almost total freedom due to his newly acquired latchkey kid status. We were in our early teens, but Tommy's mom treated us like adults in a lot of ways. She let us stay up all night and order whatever food we wanted, all with the logic of, if you want to sleep all day after eating yourself sick, that's your problem, not mine. I guess that makes her sound like a bad mom in some ways, but I can assure you that she wasn't. Tommy was always a good kid, and although she worked long hours at whatever job she had, Tommy's mom loved and took care of him. The sleepover was planned for a Friday night, so me and the other kid brought a change of clothes and whatnot into school with us. That way, we could just head back to Tommy's place when the bell rang. Tommy's mom was there to meet us, but she had to head into work almost right away, so after leaving some money on the kitchen table for us to order pizza with, she headed out. We had the entire place to ourselves, with Tommy's mom not due back until the early hours of the next morning. And it was wild, man. Total freedom, but being the good kid that he was, Tommy stopped us from getting too crazy. We threw a football around in his backyard for a while, and in all fairness, we did get pretty rowdy out there. So when we went back inside and quickly heard a knock at the front door, we figured that it might be the neighbors coming over to tell us to keep it down. Tommy had this attitude of, I'll handle it, and told us to stay put while he went to talk our way out of trouble. Me and our mutual friend, shout out to Casey, did as we were told and kept quiet in Tommy's kitchen while he worked his magic, but when he came back, the look on his face didn't fill us with confidence. We asked him what happened and he told us it wasn't one of his neighbors at the door, it had been a friend of his dad's. I didn't piece together why that might have bothered him so much and he looked really anxious when he reappeared. So out of sheer ignorance, I asked him why that might be a problem. And Tommy sighed, took a seat at the kitchen table and then explained the situation with his dad. To keep it short and not so sweet, to use Tommy's exact words, quote, my dad is a psycho, and so is his friends. He told us a bunch of stories about how horribly his dad had acted towards him and his mom, and the whole time, mine and Casey's jaws are just glued to the freaking floor. He used to hit him a bunch, and he always had a bunch of guns in the house. He used drugs right in front of a much younger Tommy like I wasn't even nothing, he would say. Real bad stuff. I think he must have been one of those guys who keeps insisting that they can change than just going back to their old behaviors, because Tommy's mom lasted a good few years after he was born before he finally got them out of there and somehow got the marriage dissolved. Me and Casey had no idea Tommy's childhood had been so crazy. I mean, we'd only known each other for a matter of months by that point, so it was all this horrifying revelation to us and obviously something Tommy didn't want to share unless he really had to. And now... He had to. But then, he got to explaining why the appearance of his dad's friend had him so spooked. First off, his dad always had a lot of different dudes coming by the house, all claiming to be his friend. So even if Tommy had been able to see the guy's face, he still might not have recognized him at all. And yep, that's how Tommy dropped that the guy had his face covered, right there in the middle of his frantic explanation. And both me and Casey were both like, what do you mean he has his face covered? And as we started to get panicky, Tom got even more agitated and then insisted that we call the cops and his mom in that order. He'd let slip to the mystery caller, whose face had apparently been partially concealed with a scarf or something, that we were home alone that night, which in turn meant that we might well be in a whole heap of trouble. Tommy's dad had been refused any chance to see him for a few years by that time, and had been trying out increasingly creative ways of circumventing the court's decision. Tommy figured that the surprise appearance might be just that, some fresh new attempt to ruin his mom's fresh start. So like she'd always taught him to do, Tommy rushed to call 911 at the first sign of danger. I feel that at this point I should make it clear that no one had any idea that Tommy's dad would try anything like that. In fact, he supposedly didn't even know where Tommy and his mom had moved to. But as I came to learn much later in life, his dad was way richer 
and way more powerful than I ever could have imagined at the time. He wasn't just some rich businessman or something. He was high up in the Kansas City Mafia. Running from anyone else might have worked, but with a guy like that, finding them was just a matter of time. And it just so happened that when that moment came, me and good old Casey had to endure it too. By the time Tommy had explained the potential danger, we were all in a state of full-blown panic. I didn't think that I could get any more scared, but after we rushed to the phone and tried to call 911, things got way worse. Tommy picked up the phone and put it to his ear, then hammered 911 into the keypad. Then he did it again, and then he hung up the phone, picked it up again, and after holding it to his ear for a second, stammered out, the phone's dead. Now, if this had happened just a few years later, the phone being dead wouldn't have been a problem. We'd have just used a cell phone to call the cops, and that would have been it. But we didn't have cell phones, and whoever had sabotaged the home's phone cables knew that we had no other means of contacting authorities. Then, right as we were about to totally lose our minds, we heard this huge smashing sound coming from the front door. Someone was trying to break in. Tommy didn't say a word, he didn't need to, the look on his face said it all. He ran out into his backyard with me and Casey in hot pursuit. We followed him into the woods behind his house then just ran and ran and ran until we couldn't run anymore. Luckily, we were maybe only a minute or two walk from a collection of houses so after knocking on their doors until we found someone that was home, we got them to call the cops for us and we finally got a chance to calm down. By the time the cops showed up, Tommy's house was empty again, but the whole place had been trashed, probably in an attempt to find Tommy. His mom came home from work early and was talking to the cops while me and Casey waited for our parents to come get us. The adrenaline high had completely worn off by then, and I remember feeling really tired after it finally sunk in that we were going to be okay. As it turned out, the two guys who showed up to abduct Tommy were picked up by the cops as they attempted to leave town. The craziest thing was, if the sheriff hadn't received another call about a guy threatening a waitress after she got his order wrong, Tommy's potential kidnappers might have escaped completely. You heard that right. There were two guys that showed up that night. The two guys could have gotten the hell out of Dodge before anyone really knew what happened, but instead... They stopped for food at some all-night diner. Then one of them brandished some steak knife at a girl and, well, the rest is history. Apparently the two guys Tommy's dad hired weren't actually members of the Kansas City Mafia as he didn't want his father and uncle, who were even higher up than he was, knowing about the kidnapping. And this gave him a kind of plausible deniability. But the 50 grand he'd promised each of the guys wasn't nearly enough to buy their silence and they rolled over almost as soon as they were arrested. The local PD were only too happy to pursue a kidnapping charge and when all was said and done, Tommy's dad ended up doing close to 10 years on some kind of conspiracy to kidnap charge as well as a few others thrown in to beef up the sentence. I don't talk to Tommy much these days, although we are still Facebook friends. I like knowing that I can reach out if I wanted to, knowing that he'll always be an integral part of the single craziest and scariest story of my childhood. If you enjoyed this scary story, listen to thousands more, either over on the Let's Read YouTube channel or podcast.